Okay, so we saw the typical React data fetching approach in the previous video. Now let's see how using Tanstack query we can improve this. But before actually showing you the implementation, I forgot quite a bunch of things from the last video. Let me just go through all of them. The first thing was I did not import the with query and without query components inside main.js file. I also went ahead and created a with query file, but for now it's just empty. It just has one text that says with query. Second thing was to just take you through what API endpoint I'm using inside the application. So I'm going to be using JSON placeholder, which has like a bunch of endpoints that give you dummy data. So I normally use these to create prototypes or POCs to demo something. So you can go to JSON placeholders website and there are a bunch of other resources as well that you can use inside your application. We'll be using posts and I don't really need any styles that that's present inside the index.css or even the app.css. Let me just get rid of everything from here. And I'll just clear everything from here as well. Now, if I go back to the application, I have this root route with just a bunch of text and some links. Let me go to without query. And here you can see all these posts. Now I had a darker background for this, but most likely when I cleared the styles in the index.css file, the darker background also got removed. So let me just bring it back. Now that we have everything ready, let's go to the Tanstack query example. First things first, we'll need to install Tanstack query. So let me open up the terminal. To install the package, I'll simply type pnpm add and stack slash react query. If you're using npm or yarn, you'll have to do npm install or yarn add. Once it's installed, there's a minor one time setup inside your main.jsx file. We'll wrap the entire react app inside a query client provider. This query client provider accepts a query client. So let me actually do that first. And this is going to take a query client. So to create this query client, I'll use the query client class that is also part of the Tanstack query package. And below the route configuration, I'll simply create and pass it inside the provider. Now inside the with query file, I'll copy the JSX items from the without query file. So that is going to be the same. So all these three blocks that you see here will be the same. The improvements we are trying to make are in the data fetching flow. So rendering remains unbothered. At the top, we'll use a new hook provided by react query called use query. I'll just show you the code first and then explain what exactly all of this means. We use the use query hook that accepts an object as a parameter. The required properties for this object are a query key and a query function. This query function is what handles the fetching logic. The query key is a unique identifier for each query. I'll come to that in a second what exactly a query means. So this use query hook now returns all the states that we need to pass in inside our JSX template. So actually I'll need to replace loading with is pending. This is pending can be used to check if the async operation is still in progress. There are three more states is error is success and is fetching. For most queries, it's usually sufficient to check for the is pending state, then the is error state, and then finally assume that the data is available and render the successful state. We'll see in future where we can use the is fetching state as well. But just by looking at the name, you'll realize that this state will be true when the actual fetch operation is happening behind the scenes. The error gives you the error object. There's also an is error boolean flag as I just mentioned, but, but if the error object is not null, it automatically means that we have an error. And finally, we have the data property, which gives us the actual data once the fetch operation is complete. If I want to further separate the data fetching from this, I can extract it out in a function and pass it to the query function property. This makes the component now much more lean and easy to scale. If I have another entity that I need to fetch in the same component, I can simply use aliases for each items. So instead of calling this is pending, I can just rename it as is posts pending or something similar. I can have aliases for each entity and based on that, I can distinguish between these states. Now let's try to understand what exactly is happening here in a bit more detail. 
in this context, you can think of a query as a link to a piece of data on the backend. The data returned by the post endpoint is linked to this query by the query key, this post data query key. Actually, I'll call it post. Post sounds better than post data. So to fetch, refetch, update or manage this data in any form, we'll go to this query. Similarly, if there are other entities that we fetch in our application, they'll have their own query. We use the use query hook to create this query by passing in an object with two required items as you can see here, query key and query function. The query key is used to associate a query with its data, enabling React query to properly cache, invalidate and update the data based on changes or requests. So what I mean by this is whenever you have a query key and this query key is linked to a piece of data, the data is cached by React query. Anytime an update needs to happen on that piece of data, React query is going to refer to the query key and check what data is linked to it. If there's a need for an update for this data that is cached by React query, it's going to refer to this query key and then make an update to the query data. The second property inside the object is a query function, which is the actual function that fetches the data returning a promise. These two are the required properties but this hook has much, much more to offer. If I take you through the docs, you'll find so many properties and methods that you can use inside this use query hook. We'll look at some of them as and when required. Going through all of them now would be overwhelming and without a proper use case would not even make sense. So yeah, this is the basic implementation of a React query. It might not make as much sense right now because all we have done is saved like 10 lines of code. But you'll get to see the real power of this library when we think of optimizing our application. Let me actually paint a picture for you. Say you have a social media application that has three data items, the feed, the messages and your user profile. Now these three data items can be fetched in three different ways. The incoming messages have to be real time, the caching is out of the picture here. The feed on the other hand need not be refreshed that often. It's okay if you get an updated feed every other minute. So if I switch to a different route and I come back to this feed in under a minute, the fetch call need not happen. The data actually might be fresh and making another call to get this feed data doesn't really make sense. Even if the data is not fresh, it's okay because it's not that critical. If I get the new feed items one minute late, it's not going to make that much of a difference. So we can simply cache the items from the feed and display it as it is for a minute. Once the minute is up, you can then make a refetch and get the new items and update the feed. The user profile info can be cached for even longer. You need not fetch your profile details every time you go to that page. You can cache it for a day or even several days because that data is very rarely updated. And even if you get like a stale or outdated data for someone else's profile, it's not that critical. This cannot happen in the case of messages or even the feed to a certain extent. So these three use cases can fall under the same application. Handling caching strategies, refetching and revalidating for all these queries is extremely tedious if you plan to do it manually. This is where React Query's true power comes into play. In the next video, we'll start to add simple caching strategies to this app and try to optimize it. We'll also use the DevTools extension for React Query that will help us debug more efficiently and save us a lot of time. So do subscribe for that and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.